All right, welcome back to about 641. So first there was dengue, then there was chikungunya. Now there's another mosquito-borne disease that's threatening the Caribbean with a much easier name to say, the Zika virus. It's traveled uh, not on our shores just yet, but it has been confirmed as close as Suriname and the Ministry of Health is making all efforts to educate the public on this new virus. So we have Dr. Miriam Abdul-Richards, County Medical Officer of Health for St. George West. She's in the studio and she's gonna tell us more about the virus. So good morning. Good morning, Kijan. So tell me, what is it that we, what is the difference between uh, this virus, Zika, and chikungunya or, or dengue? Or is it, are they all part of the same family? Well, they're all mosquito-borne viruses, but fortunately, Zika tends to be one that is a little bit milder in terms of its symptoms and in terms of the long-term complications that may occur with it. Whereas with dengue, patients would have a risk of actually becoming very ill due to their platelets falling and bleeding, which could ultimately lead in death. And in chikungunya, where there was the risk of long-term arthritic pains and severe mobility, and it cripples you, and you can't work effectively, Zika tends to be a much milder disease that lasts probably about two to seven days with fever, body pain, and a mild rash. So there are no long-term sequelae or long-term complications associated with it. How is it that they seem to change every year? This same, this same mosquito seems to create a different virus or a virus with different symptoms every, every year. Well, it's not really that it's a different virus. It's just that these viruses, um, they mutate and they really um, would move from different areas. So for example, Zika virus has now become a threat to us because a case was diagnosed in Suriname, which is one of our neighboring countries. Of course, with increasing trade and global travel and so, it becomes a lot easier to have these mosquitoes enter our shores. So is it that the virus originates from, from one specific spot because of the type of mosquito or what the mosquito, how the mosquitoes breed in this area and then travels? Where does it all start? Where is the ground zero of, of this? Well, it would start in, yes, you're, you're right. It starts in a particular area. It may start in a particular um, country and so, for, so forth. Um, and then from there, it would spread within the human population because the mosquito is the vector. Mm -hmm. Right, and then from then, with due to travel and trade, mosquitoes can you know come in in a containerized in containerized cargo, so they can, for example, bite someone on a port or so and come across, and it, tra it is transmitted. And so, when you are studying these diseases, how do you even begin to say, well, all right, this is where it started, this is how we should stop it? What's the research process like when looking at these diseases? Well, the research project process would involve surveillance. And that is a key component of dealing with any sort of disease. What I would say is that the Ministry of Health in Trinidad and Tobago has actively um, sought to increase the surveillance mechanisms for all diseases, especially the mosquito-borne diseases. So uh, we would get relevant information from the World Health Organization or the Pan American Health Organization about a disease that may have been detected or, tre or is trending in an area. We would have what is called a case definition, which looks at the relevant symptoms. So for example, for Zika, it might be fever for a certain number of days duration, a rash, body pain, headache, etc. And then we would identify, we would, we would launch a public education and intensive physician and healthcare practitioners education program to educate them about this virus. And then if we detect or we notice patients with these symptoms, we would take their blood tests. In the case of Zika, we do have collaboration with the Caribbean Public Health Agency to do what is called a PCR testing um, to confirm the presence of this virus. And so when, you, when you've confirmed it, obviously you now have to go out and, and start spraying and doing, mm -hmm. doing the whole thing that we did for dengue and that we did it for, for chikungunya. But does that mean that dengue and chikungunya are now done? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, whenever we have these mosquito-borne diseases and viruses, it is an excellent window of opportunity for us to go back to eliminating that vector. In this case, the vector f that is common or the agent that transmits these three very important viruses is the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And really what we would like to promote at the Ministry of Health is some sort of personal responsibility from our citizens as well as an attitudinal shift and change in our behaviors. The usual clean your, clean your exactly. surroundings. Exactly. We need sure to take no responsibility. We need to be able not just to 
called the insect vector control division and asked for spraying because spraying is not the answer. The answer is to reduce the source of the virus, which is the mosquito. And we need to do that. That's not a job that the Ministry of Health really um, should be looking at, but directly. But we need to identify our unkempt vacant lots. We need to call the regional cooperation or the county medical officers of health office if there is an issue regarding you know, a vacant lot next to you or if there's a lot of derelict vehicles nearby or anything that harbors mosquitoes and make the necessary interventions ourselves. I'm just looking at it from a layman's perspective mm -hmm. or from a journalist's perspective who when we were covering these cases last year, everybody had chicken gun here. Right. This year, you're not hearing about it as, as much, or if at all. I, I don't think we've had, or maybe we just haven't been covering it, but you really haven't been hearing about chicken gun or even dengue with the same severity. Is it that we've actually been paying attention and we actually have been cleaning or have we just not been covering the cases that are there? Well, the Ministry of Health did launch a very successful chikungunya, um, camp, anti chikungunya campaign last year um, when the disease was detected. And it consisted of improved or enhanced public health education measures, which involved uh, a chick fee caravan. Mm -hmm. There was a free distribution of mosquito nets and zappers. So, Really and truly, there has been um, an actual less, uh, the decrease in the number of chicken gunya cases la this year as compared to last year. Um, additionally, the cases that we did report for the introduction of a new virus, which we anticipated to be somewhere around 30%, we actually, were, we actually only had about 20% of cases of um, the population being detected with chicken gunya. So that's great. So we've, we've been paying attention. We have been, but we still have a lot of work to go on, and that is why this year the ministry is taking a proactive approach and not waiting for persons to become infected with Zika virus. It's the, the rainy season is almost done, uh, and I found, again, layman, layman's mm -hmm. perspective, when last year it really, the chicken gunya really hit us from like June to December. Yes. And then as soon as the dry season came around, you heard it less and less, mm -hmm. and by March there was there was nothing so we're in November now when the dry season rolls around is it that maybe the same thing again we shouldn't worry as much about these these diseases well I won't say we shouldn't worry what I would say is that this seasonal trend in these viruses dengue chikungunya and now well we hope not to have any Zika soon and now we have the impending threat of Zika is directly tied to the rainy season because mm -hmm. it's the time of the year when we have an increase in these vectors which is a mosquito now during and the dry season rain and rain right, exactly. everywhere right so what we should really look at is using the dry season as well as an opportunity for us to ensure that all our relevant arrangements with respect to dealing with our garbage disposal and identifying persons who may have vacant lots next to us that you know get very you know unkempt during the rainy season are dealt with there's no way to, for one mosquito to carry two diseases at the same time is there unfortunately they work? can yes they can how, so how does that how does that work? Can you get chicken gunya and dengue at the same time, or chicken gunya and Zika, or dengue and Zika? How how does that work with? Well, you know, that's a muscles? very interesting question, and I'm not an entomologist <laughs> or virologist, <laughs> but I understand that the, it is possible theoretically for a mosquito to carry two viruses. So you can get so, hit twice with yes, one. Yes. Well, with one yes, virus. but as far as evidence-based research is concerned, I have not come across any recent case studies demonstrating that you know a person has been diagnosed with one two or three of them at the same time but theoretically that is possible so it's a worst case scenario that's at a least worst case exactly all right well fingers crossed that we that we yeah. never that we never come across that and then hopefully that doesn't become the norm mm -hmm. so when you're looking at this zika virus Suriname and was there one in north the northern the greater Antilles, somewhere jamaica or cuba where, where, were the, where was it where has it been discovered so far well, the information that has come to us is that it was there was a, there were cases in Suriname. Right. There are no suspected or confirmed cases in Trinidad and Tobago at this point in time. And there's no way to we haven't been panicking, right? We haven't been saying, well, let's stop all imports from Suriname. Let's stop all no, travel no, no, to no, Suriname. No, no, we, no, no. We've we've been at least good about about no. that, right? Exactly. And this is not something that we should be recommending. This sort of crazy panic. No, absolutely not. We need to be aware that with globalization and increasing trade and foreign travel, this is a, you know, a side effect of it in terms of the fact that we will expect that viruses and so because of the movement of persons and cargo will 
a coup. However, our role at the Ministry of Health is to be proactive and to take preventive measures to reduce, if possible, the transmission of such diseases. And I think in the case of Zika, we have a very good opportunity because it's a mosquito-borne disease. So if we get rid of the mosquito and we eliminate their breeding sites, then we have a good chance of persons not contracting it. There was research be being done by CARPA about trying to create a, a, a male mosquito that right. was sterile and then when they yes. mated, they made others mm -hmm. sterile and just tried to kill it. How far is that research going? Um, at this point in time, I don't have any, any firm facts or confirmed information from the Ministry of Health. Um, that question would be better directed to persons at the Insect Vector Control Division and through the Ministry. But it seems like an idea that so crazy it just might work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, and so when we, when we do, in lieu of that, mm -hmm. the spring, we're also hearing that the spring doesn't work. They, they've become immune to it in some instances. Have you heard that as well? And uh, what do we do instead? Okay, so the public position is that whenever we see an empty lot or a mosquito bites us, we call the insect vector control division and we ask to have spraying done. Right. However, spraying should not be used as a preventive measure um, at all times because the mosquitoes eventually become resistant to that chemical. They learn and they grow Exactly. Get accustomed to it. There's a specific spring cycle that is done by the Insect Vector Control Division of the Ministry of Health to prevent or reduce the likelihood of resistance with mosquitoes. So we really should look at reducing the mosquito breeding sites. And again, it goes back to us taking personal responsibility and changing the way we think about our health. Our health should not really be the official or the first line should not be the Ministry of Health coming to spray for us. Right. We should try to clean up our areas. Spraying no, is used as a measure. Yes, exactly. What the government doing for that? <laughs> uh, when we, if you do suspect that you have this, what should you look out for and what is the first line of defense? Okay, so if you believe that you have Zika, you may have symptoms of fever, some mild body pain, you may see a mild rash as well. Now, it's interesting to know that the symptoms of Zika are very similar to any other viral illness, including dengue and chikvi. So if you believe that you have Zika, we again encourage you to seek health care at your local health center first. We have 105 health centers, which are open from 8 to 4, Monday to Friday, and several of them in your community would be also open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. The treatment for Zika would usually start with basic analgesics or basic painkillers such as paracetamol and it's important that you really start with paracetamol first mm -hmm. because as I said earlier the disease or the symptoms of this disease are similar to dengue and chikvi and in the case of dengue you really should not be using any other sorts of painkillers because there may be complications. So go to the doctor first and yes. then let the doctor prescribe. Don't, don't try to treat this at home by yourself. Well, you can observe initially, you know, we usually say the first two days or so you can observe and see how you're doing. You use your usual supportive sort of treatment, you know, have lots of fluid, rest, use a paracetamol. And if for some reason you find you're not feeling better, then you should seek medical attention. All right. Thanks very much for, for that in information. <laughs> Thank you very much. Kira. Well, let's, you, know, you know what you have to do. Clean up your surroundings and make sure that you do everything you can do to get rid of this Aedes aegypti mosquito. We're going to take a break and be right back. News is next.